Hello and welcome by EA's art channel. My name is Jokian Wiersma and today we're going to talk about another portrait. And this time it is a Colombian young girl. And uh, maybe you notice, but if you don't, I'm working on a collection of 12 portraits of different um, children, uh, uh, yeah, different children from different cultures. And she is uh, number seven, so I have a few to go. And obviously I hope to finish it uh, soon, but uh, you may know that portraits uh, take uh, some time and also I like to um, switch some subjects uh, when I'm uh, working in, uh, uh, on a painting or drawing so I don't uh, like to paint uh, only portraits or only animals so I uh, switch between them and that keeps uh, me more interested in, uh, in the things that I'm working on but uh, yeah, like I said today I would like to share this with you I'm uh, painting with, uh, with oil paint and I'm using the Gamblin paint I really am um, really a big fan of the Gamma paint. I think it's a wonderful paint. And also it has a lot of beautiful colors. And uh, I also thin my layers with the Liquim from Winter and Newton. And um, I really like it. If you don't know, I like to work in thin layers. And also I like to um, uh, start out my uh, portraits with uh, a, a brown undertone. You will see me do that obviously in the tutorial. And I use raw umber with a little bit of white and a little bit of black. And that is how I'm painting in my details. And when I have done all those details, I'm uh, gonna start with colors. But before, uh, like I said, before I use colors, I, I focus only on the details. And uh, for me, that is a very, very nice way to paint portraits because I don't have to stress out over the colors yet. That will come later. And um, if I uh, uh, do remember, I will have a link pop up where I uh, am explaining the layers that I use to finish a painting. It's, uh, I'm talking about five basic steps, five basic layers. That doesn't mean it takes five layers, but it's just the basics of the layers. So I mean, if you need 10 layers, that's okay, obviously. If you should, uh, would be able to use three layers, which I don't think you, you can, but if you could, uh, that's all, all, uh, also okay. It's just five basic layers, five basic steps. And um, the difference in portraits is sometimes I have a lot of details, so I have a mix up a lot of different colors. So that means most of the time that I use a, a few more mm. steps. So, uh, but enough about it. Today we're going to focus on this Colombian girl, and here is the tutorial. And I already uh, painted in the background. I did it with acrylic paint. I uh, mixed up some black with a little bit of brown, and uh, just to save some time because I needed a dark background, and the acrylic paint does dry uh, much quicker than the oil paint. So therefore, I started out uh, on acrylic paint, and I'm going to paint over that with my oils. And of course I started with a uh, uh, good drawing that is very important because if your drawing is not good or good enough, it's off with some details or something like that, uh, you will not paint it correctly. So therefore uh, be sure, take your time for uh, drawing in your portrait before you even start painting. And um, I did it and then I started painting with my oil paint. I used a raw umber, some white and some black, just to lay in the first basic, uh, yeah, bigger portions, bigger details. Some lights and some darks and I'm just painting in, um, basically making a map where, uh, so I know where which uh, should go. And this is just the first layer, so I'm not that precisely in my details yet, but I'm just, uh, like I said, focusing on the lights and the darks and that will make the shapes that I need. And also when I'm painting like this, I have obviously the reference photo close to the easel on my screen and I'm really watching, um, like I said, those lights and those, those darks because those are very important. And I'm just only worrying about that with my details and not about the colors because I'm uh, painting in a, uh, with a, um, only with a raw umber and black and white, I don't have to focus on the colors yet. That will come later on. And like I said in, in the intro, this is really a nice approach, for me at least. I really like this because uh, I have all the time that I need to fill in all, all those different shapes that I'm seeing and that will end up in uh, right shapes and uh, will make it uh, appear like I will, uh, like I want. But I need to focus on all those different shapes and also for uh, for the hands. And that was quite kind of funny because he has a quite a, a large hand, if you ask me. I really did like it. I, I, I found uh, the portrait, uh, the girl, a very um, 
very nice but she had a very thick hand and i uh, to be honest i struggled uh, about it a little bit because it felt like it was always a bit off but yes he has just a uh, for me a uh, a little bit of bigger hand than i am used to painting in um, with children of this this age but uh, yeah she has it so it has to be there and um yeah, so I really focused on my details, on my uh, different shapes that I'm seeing in the reference photo. Even though I'm thinking it's not right, I know it should be there because uh, it does appear in my reference photo. And therefore a good reference photo is very, very handy and very uh, important. Because my brain did say to me, this is not right, this is not right. But the eyes told me that this is what we see, so we, I have to make it. And that is a process you need to learn to um, yeah, get used to it. Because uh, you have to copy what you see and not paint what you think that you are seeing. And that is a big, big difference. It sounds so easy, but for me it was a very, very hard... Yeah, um, so I, I struggled a lot to accomplish that, but now when I paint and draw more and more and more, it's, it does get easier. I'm, um, like I said, I'm, um, yeah, trusting my eyes and not my brains. <laughs> and it may uh, uh, sound a little bit funny, but uh, I don't know why, but we always have the uh, tendency to fill in uh, what we are seeing. Our brains is telling uh, us what we are seeing, but uh, yeah, like I said, that is not always that useful. And now I'm covering um, that background color, the acrylic paint, with oil paints. And I'm leaving it a little bit wet because there in the left hand upper side is a little bit of a uh, lighter shape. And um, that is for me easier to uh, get it uh, out of focus when I'm, having, uh, when I'm painting with wet paint. Because it, then I can uh, get rid of my brush strokes very easily. So I like to uh, paint sometimes a little bit wet into wet. Even though like I, I'm always talking about layering, but sometimes the wet into wet uh, technique is a little bit easier. And now I'm starting with the second layer and I'm focusing uh, more on the details. As you can see, I'm starting with the eyes. I like to start with the eyes because it may sound a little bit funny, but I, I feel more connected with my subject if it's a animal or a uh, or people, it doesn't matter. But when I'm starting with the eyes, it the start it starts to, yeah, get alive a little bit more. So therefore, I like to start out with uh, with the eyes. And now I'm focusing again on on her hand, and I really, really spent a, spent a lot of time painting in her fingers and all those little details because they are very, very important. Don't skip over them. Just take your time and lay those details in because it will make all the difference in the end. Because otherwise, if you don't do that, you will end up with a uh, portrait that is uh, completely and nicely detailed in the face and her hair, but you did, didn't get those details in on her hands. And that will show up, that definitely will show up. And I don't want that, I want that photorealistic feeling of this painting, so I need those details in her hands, in her fingers, sorry, not her hands, in her hand and on her fingers. And I really did like that uh, bit of sunshine on her face and on her hair. And I started out very light with that color. It's, it looks like uh, almost white, it isn't, but very, very light. And I do that because I'm going to glaze over the color, like I said in the uh, in the intro and the beginning of this tutorial. But um, yeah, to um, get those colors very nice and even, I am uh, going to uh, make that uh, appear uh, a bit, uh, quite a bit lighter now. Because like I said, I'm going to layer over it, so I'm going to tone that down later on. But I want to have that contrast in the, those lights and darks now, so I can layer over several layers and don't. And, and then I'm don't losing my details underneath those colors. And the big thick, dark section uh, of hair on her forehead, I will remove that. And you will see that happening, uh, I think, almost uh, now. And yeah, here it, uh, here it did happen. I just did a use a uh, bit of tissue to get those uh, that paint off again because I painted in uh, way too dark. And I could do that uh, because, you, as you can see, her skin uh, tone, her skin is still there. The the, the paint, um, I should say, the layer underneath there is still there because I did let it dry in between layers, and that is also very very important if you're painting in uh, with oils in layers. You need to let those layers dry up in between. 
So therefore I uh, use the liquid like I said in the intro and that does dry overnight because I am using quite thin layers and it will be dry overnight so I can uh, um, paint over the, those layers the next day. And if I do uh, make a little mistake like I did on her hair, there uh, it was too dark, it was too much, I just can uh, wipe it off with a, uh, with a tissue, with a fiber tissue, and then uh, I could repaint it, like I did here. There were, uh, it was too dark and it was too big of a clump dark paint, it just didn't um, look right, it didn't felt ra right. And now you can, uh, you could see that I did uh, leave a little bit more open sections between the hair, so you can see the, her skin underneath that hair, and that does look uh, way more natural than it uh, did before. But yeah, there's something, uh, something very important if you do paint in oils. Don't uh, paint too long. If you have a layer and, and it, uh, isn't right and you are basically making mud on your canvas, you are having too much paint on it, just leave it and uh, leave it to dry. And if you have a liquid, like I said, it will be dry overnight. If you don't use any liquid, you have to wait a bit longer, but don't try to paint over it and over it and over it because it doesn't work when you paint, your underlayers are uh, still wet. So therefore it's also, for me, it's very helpful to uh, let those layers dry. Also for, uh, like I said, if you do uh, something a little bit wrong, it is no problem because you can take those that paint off uh, quite easily again. And in this case, I'm really, really focusing on those teeny tiny details. And especially on her uh, shirt, I don't know of her skirt, I'm not sure what she's wearing, but it, uh, I really wanted to, that, that uh, yeah, almost a little bit dirty feeling of her clothes in there. And that's what I personally really like. I don't know if it's dirt, but I'm just uh, uh, imagining that. But um, yeah, I really want to focus on those details because those details make uh, all the difference in the end piece. Those little, little teeny tiny details. And of course, I don't have to be 100% exact, but I want to have a uh, close feeling as, um, as the details show up in my reference photo. And here I start glazing and you see can see the uh, the big difference in when, uh, how it was and how it's showing up now it's a way too yellowish now but yeah you can see that i'm layering off the color but i don't lose those details and that's what i was talking about uh, in the early on in this tutorial and yeah like i said this is such a nice way to paint it really really suits me very well it, it, yeah i yeah, don't think i'm gonna change this way of painting uh, anytime because it's it's really wonderful and especially for portraits and of course i like to try new things out so the possibility is there that i uh, once i will uh, try something uh, a bit different but yeah if you uh, like to part, uh, paint portraits this is uh, for me i think the most easiest way to approach portraits and this uh, does apply with oil paints of course if you have another medium you may want to paint it completely different than uh, you see me do he doing here but uh, I only uh, use this uh, method uh, with um, with oil paints and that said I don't uh, paint uh, any portraits with acrylic paints but I, I did uh, mean uh, for uh, for example watercolor pastels uh, that kind of stuff I have a uh, pastel portrait I did have a, a completely different approach uh, with that portrait because of the medium but of course feel free and try to experiment as m much as you can because you are uh, gonna learn so much of those experience. It really really helped me and I just found this way and I'm really liking uh, the way uh, it's painting this way I should say. And now I, like I said uh, in this tutorial, I'm now repainting some details. I just did lose a few details or I want to um, Pop a little, uh, let those details a little pop a little bit more so I'm repainting them but it's not that hard and not that much work because I didn't lose that much of detail uh, because I just layered over thin layers of uh, color and uh, so yeah that's very very handy and I was really working that color the skin color because it, it felt so yellow but she has a Kind of yellow skin so yeah it had to be there but to be honest i uh, did uh, re-layer it a little bit because um i thought it was uh, too yellow but uh yeah 
it, there is a yellow tone in there. Sometimes, like I said, uh, also mentioned earlier on, is that uh, our brain can tell us that something is wrong. But if you do see it, if it is like it is, you have to just have to paint it in. So that was a nice lesson as well. And um, but there was also some purple in there and a little bit of a reddish brown on her uh, cheek and her nose, and that make also did made also a, a quite a big difference. When I uh, as soon as I painted that in that yellow uh, skin tone, that that yellow tint in her skin tone did make way more sense than before, because I uh, I just needed more colors, and it's probably uh, most of the times the problem. You don't have. To, um, you, you need more colors to let it um, appear as you want. So uh, sometimes, I, most of the times, I'm using more colors than than that the, uh, than that shows up in my reference photo. I just personally like it, and it uh, makes it a, a way more richer feel than uh, when I'm only using the colors of the uh, the reference photo. And this is the nicest thing of uh, art, of course, you can uh, change what you want. And you may see uh, a quite a difference in color-wise. Color that is uh, once again because of my daylight lens, lamps. So don't forget that it uh, does show up a bit darker and, uh, if you ask me, uh, much richer in this picture. But um, yeah, this is the picture that I uh, took from the, uh, from the painting. And uh, once again, I of course hope you liked it. But this is uh, my Colombian girl. I had a little bit uh, a hard time to with this setup I in am uh, currently because the uh, painting is not as big so I but my easel cannot go up any higher but I hope to uh, to show it to you but you can see the glare on a painting is very very much and especially uh, in oil paints and when I'm using that uh, the uh, liquid it uh, makes it very shiny so I hope you can see it. Um, enough like here but it's a it's a smaller painting it's 30 uh, by 40 centimeters but yeah I have a difficulty of I'm trying to find out the best setup because my last tutorial about Fox I um, I did show it but um, obviously I did show it but I uh, it was very dark so I have my light uh, set up a little bit different than uh, before I just trying uh, things out and I hope to find a, a nice setup but the lights, the daylights are very um, strong, so <laughs> I have to find a nice setup so I don't have a lot of glare. I am, um, and my painting is um, is nice displayed in this uh, tutorial, of course. But so therefore, you see me uh, do a little bit of different setups uh, the last tutorials. But I think this is a quite a nice one. And uh, as usual, if you have any questions or suggestions about paintings or something uh, I did earlier on, please leave it in the comment section below and I will try to come back uh, at that as soon as possible. And of course, if you like, you can follow me on Instagram. I try to uh, post uh, as often as I can on Instagram. I don't always have time because I'm not a full-time artist, but I um, try to do it on a professional level, but I have to do it next to my daily job. So. Uh, but I try to post as many uh, things on Instagram as well and currently I'm working on a, a very very exciting uh, project um, so I post uh, a little bit about the project on Instagram it's a whole different setup uh, a more surrealistic painting than I ever did before and I'm really really liking it and I uh, can't wait to share it with you guys, but yeah, if you want to know when I'm finishing uh, up that painting, uh, keep uh, me uh, following, uh, follow me, uh, well, that didn't sound right. Try to follow me on Instagram and I will keep you posted up there. And obviously, of course, that tutorial will come uh, also on my YouTube channel, but it may take some time because it's quite a big painting. And um, well, so yeah, you can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and on my own website, of course. And if you like this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up. And of course, if you like, you can subscribe to my channel. And uh, if you do that, please uh, also click that bell button so you get a notification when I'm uh, uploading a new tutorial. So that was it for now. I hope to see you at one of my other tutorials. Thank you for watching and bye bye.